Hi guys, Olive here. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about something a little bit interesting. These are six different books that I still can't decide how I feel about. As you guys probably know, when you first finish a book, you normally have a good idea of what you feel about that book, whether it be good, bad, or ugly. Sure, you can give your feelings some time to settle, but sometimes when it comes to some books, no matter how much time has passed, you still can't come to any solid conclusion about how you felt about that book. This has happened to me surprisingly often in my adult reading life, so I thought I would come to you with these feelings in the vain hopes that maybe I will someday be able to figure out my feelings on any of these books. The first book I find myself feeling this way about is the one I have finished most recently, and that's Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. All of the elements of this book should have added up to a read that I couldn't get enough of. In this book, you have an academic setting, an outsider trying to work her way into a very snobby interconnected group of friends, tons of pop culture, literary, and academic references, and a murder mystery. These are all things that I like. And while I did like all of those individual aspects in the book, there's something about the way that they just didn't come together in the end that really rubbed me the wrong way. It was one of those books that the whole way through I was willing myself to love it and I just never did. Another book I definitely felt this way about was Asunder by Chloe Arides. I read this book pre-booktube and was almost positive that I was going to love it even before I picked it up. The book is centered on a woman who works at an art museum who is slowly realizing just how discontented she is becoming with her life. Everything about it seemed like it was going to be one of those quiet, powerful books that I have grown to love so much, but it was way more quiet than it was powerful. However, I still find myself thinking quite a lot about the conversations that happen in this book, and I will never ever look at the word crackliture the same way. So this is definitely one that I didn't love in the moment, haven't grown to love over time, but still has gotten stuck in my head. The next book I just can't decide how I feel about is Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. A couple summers back, this was a pretty popular one. It's about a woman living in New York City who has the seemingly perfect life. She has the perfect job, the perfect boyfriend, the perfect physique, but underneath her carefully crafted persona lie secrets from her past. Though I can't say I have one particular taste in fiction, I am always up for a good thriller, especially during the summer. Although I found this book a page turner, I was at a complete loss at how I really felt about the character and her backstory when I finished the last page. It was definitely a gritty story, which in most cases I can appreciate, but it felt like it was introduced at such random times that I never felt like I was ready for it. It seemed to me that the main character's motivations were so black and white and therefore incredibly predictable. And yet a lot of this book was unpredictable at the same time. And now you see from where my inner conflict rises. The next book on this list is The Slinks by Tatiana Tolstaya. I picked up The Slinks in the hopes of reading it with my husband, who is mainly a science fiction reader. I thought maybe we could find some intersection of our taste with this book. This is a dystopian book that happens a hundred years or so after a catastrophic world event called The Blast. I think we can assume that it was some sort of nuclear event. Unsurprisingly, the things I ended up liking about this book were the inherently Russian elements and the references to aspects of Russian history. But given that science fiction is not really my forte and weird fiction certainly isn't, everything else was very grating. At the end of the day, it was just a very weird book, with a story that I lost interest in enough to just start skimming toward the end. But again, I find myself thinking about this book on occasion and laughing at some of the funny references it made. So I feel conflicted that I have funny memories attached to this book while also having bad memories and that I was really disliking it as I read it. The fifth and penultimate book I'll be talking about in this video is Mermaids in Paradise by Lydia Millet. This is a book that I listened to on CD a couple of summers past while my husband and I were taking a road trip. My husband was only half paying attention to this book as we took our drive, and even he had comments about how weird it was. The very basic premise of this book is that there is a newlywed couple on their honeymoon on an exotic island, and very soon after their arrival, one of the fellow guests at the resort discovers that there are real live mermaids living in the waters off of the coast of the island. When the resort catches wind that these mermaids are there, they start trying to capture the mermaids in order to capitalize upon them and turn them into a tourist attraction. The newlywed couple at the center of this book, along with 
the scientist who first discovers the mermaids, and a ragtag group of followers decide to stop the resort from doing this. So that's a pretty interesting premise to begin with, and the story takes very odd turns and is culminated with an ending that literally comes out of nowhere. This was a book that I wasn't sure how I was feeling about the whole way through, Though I was enjoying it, it didn't seem to be really taking me anywhere interesting. And though I am someone who 99.9% .9 of the time thinks that an ending can't ruin an entire book, I felt like this one did. Right from the moment I finished that book through to the present day, I have been trying to go back through the entirety of the story, trying to think if there were any indicators that that ending was in store. I keep coming to the same conclusion, that there weren't any. And in a similar vein, I would like to talk to you about the last book that I just can't figure out how I feel about, and that is Sweet Tooth by Ian McEwan. This was another book that I read pre-Booktube, and at the time, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it, given that Ian McEwan was one of the authors who inspired me to get back into reading after I fell out for a period. This is a book set in 1970s Britain. There is a young woman named Serena who was working for the Secret Service. She is given a secret mission, Operation Sweet Tooth, to go undercover under the guise of being a bestower of a literary scholarship, to approach upcoming literary talent, in the hopes of subsidizing their living and hoping to get them to start writing more propaganda-ish literature on behalf of the government. Things start to get very complicated when Serena begins a relationship with one of the authors that she has approached. Out of all of the books I have talked about, this is probably the one that I enjoyed the most during my reading of it. I really enjoyed Serena's character. She is a logic-driven woman, which we don't always get to see, and I find refreshing since that's the way that I think and operate. However, there is something that happens at the very end of this book that makes you see her character and really the whole story differently. I don't want to go into too many details because I don't want to spoil this for you in case you want to read it, but I have felt conflicted ever since I finished this book. And really, that's how I feel about all six of those books or rather how I don't know how I feel about all six of those books. I would love to hear what you think about any of the six books I mentioned. I would also love to hear if this is something that you find yourself experiencing. Are you someone who always knows how you feel about a book, or do you find yourself waffling sometimes if a book did some things right and some things so wrong? I would love to hear from you down in the comment section below. You can also reach me a variety of places on social media, and all the links to my profiles are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.